Tolbert. I'm a teaching artist for Metau Arts, a nonprofit arts organization in Twist. Today we will be painting colorful fish. These colorful fish will teach us more about mixing colors and more about the color wheel, which we started learning about last week. For this lesson, you will need three pieces of paper, a cup of water, your watercolor paint set with your brush, Oops. and a paper towel or napkin, something to dab up extra water in your paint set. Today we're going to learn a little more about color. So this is the color wheel that we made last week. And you'll see we have our primary colors, which are blue, red, and yellow. And we learned about our secondary colors, which are green, purple, and orange. And then we learned that you can also mix lots of beautiful colors in between all those secondary colors. So a really dark blue-purple or a really light spring green. So mixing colors gives you lots of options for different colors to make. Today we're going to be looking at some other elements of the color chart. So we're going to start by looking at warm and cool colors. So the warm colors are on this side of the color wheel. So we have yellow, orange, and red. And kind of all the colors next to yellow, orange, and red are what we call warm colors. And you can remember that if you think of things that are warm, like fire. These are the colors I would use to paint fire. The other half of the color wheel is cool colors. So we have green, blue, and purple. And those are all what we call cool colors and all these colors in between. And if you think about ice and snow or winter, these are the colors I would think of cool colors to describe winter. Okay, we're going to start by painting a fish using warm colors. So this is my warm colored fish. You can see I used red and orange and yellow. All the colors that are on this half of the color wheel. So we'll start with a warm colored fish. Okay, to get started with our warm colored fish, I'm going to start by mixing warm colors on my palette, which is the top of my paint tray, also called a palette. So I'm going to get some red on my brush and use a nice, kind of a lot of water, get a nice pile of red on my palette. Rinse out my brush and put some yellow. So if you'll remember, red and yellow are two of our primary colors. And by mixing them, we can make orange. And red, yellow, and orange are warm colors. Great, so I've got some yellow, some red, and now I'm gonna mix some orange by making a pile of yellow and putting just a little bit of red into the yellow. If you remember from last week, we talked about how there's dark colors and light colors. So red is darker than yellow, so I need less red to make orange and more yellow. So there's kind of a nice orange. Now the really nice thing about mixing your own colors instead of using the orange they give you is you can decide if you want a light yellow orange or a nice dark red orange or something in between. Great. So now that you have your colors mixed up, let's start painting. So when I start painting a fish, I'm going to start with red, but you can start with whatever color you want, any warm color. Uh, I usually start with somewhat of an almond shape, but the nice thing about fish is that fish come in lots of different shapes and sizes. So this does not have to be a realistic fish. This can be any kind of fish you want. Okay, now I'm going to add some fins. You can add some fins. Fins are usually kind of somewhat triangular, but they don't have to be. They can be anything. And you might want to add an eye and a mouth. I'm going to make mine smiley. 
So there's kind of our basic fish shape. Now let's use our other warm colors, so orange and yellow, to paint in the fish. Now this doesn't have to be a realistic fish, like I said, so you can paint it with stripes or with polka dots, really anything, any uh, type of painting you want, as long as you're using warm colors. So go ahead and take a few moments now to paint in your fish. Okay, so I've colored in my warm color fish and you can see I used yellow and kind of a light orange and then also a darker orange in the fins. I used some more red and the spots which when it mixed with the orange, it made kind of a dark orange. So lots of nice colors you can use with warm colors. Um, you also see I used a pattern here. So I did orange stripe with dots, yellow stripe, orange stripe with dots, yellow stripe, orange stripe with dots, yellow stripe, and so on and so on. So patterns are a nice way to color something in. Great, so when you look at your fish, your warm colored fish, can you feel the warmth coming off of it? Because I kind of feel like I can. Like when I look at warm colors, I can think about fire, and I think about sunshine, or a beach, it's like I'm on a hot beach somewhere. So this warm colored fish really makes me think about things that feel warm, because we used warm colors. Great, so next we're gonna paint our cool colored fish. So I'm going to get a blank sheet of paper and I'm going to do a little cleanup in my palette. So what I'm going to do is just dip the very corner of my paper towel in the water and I'm going to clean up the top of my lid so that I have a nice just plain white clean plastic to mix my cool colors on. So that's, with watercolor, since they mix so easily and they're so watery, it's a good idea to keep your palette nice and clean. It will help not make muddy colors like brown. Okay, so let's start mixing some cool colors. So for cool colors, we need blue. And now green is one of our cool colors. So in order to mix green, what color do we need? We need yellow. And yellow is kind of an interesting color because it can kind of be a warm color or a cool color. So a really very, very light yellow green would be a cool color, whereas a little bit more, um, a yellow that has a little bit more orange in it might be considered a warm color. Okay, so I have yellow, I have blue, and now to make purple, which is also a cool color, I'm going to need red. So red I'm going to put way down at the bottom of my palette because I want to remember red is not a cool color. Red is a warm color, so I'm only going to use it to mix my purple. Great, so you can mix up some colors, mix up some purple by putting a little blue into your red. And there I have a nice purple. And you can mix up a green by putting a little bit of blue into your yellow. And there's kind of a nice spring green. And remember, you can make all different shades of these colors. So I can make a really dark green by mixing more blue and less yellow. Something kind of like that. So you've got lots of options for cool colors using blue, green, and purple. Great, and now you can paint your cool colored fish the same way that we painted our warm colored fish. So you can start with somewhat of an almond shape or another shape if you want a different shaped fish. And then you can add some fins. Mine's going to have a really big fin this time. And don't forget about the eye and the mouth.
Great. And then you can color in your fish and try to think about what kind of pattern could you use to color it in using your cool colors, using green, purple, and blue. So take a few minutes now to color in your cool colored fish. Great, so I've colored in my cool colored fish. You can see I've used a kind of a light green to make zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. And I've used a darker green for stripes in between. And then I've used purple, a dark purple, like a blue purple for these little dots. And more of a uh, red purple for the fins. So you can see the pattern I've made is zigzag, stripes, dots, zigzag, stripes, dots, and so on. So looking at our cool colored fish, can you feel how it feels cool compared to our warm colored fish? The cool colors make me think of kind of clear, cool water or snow or a cool wind compared to our warm colored fish, which feels like sunshine. So if you want another challenge, we can make some complementary fish. So if we look at our color wheel again, complementary colors we talked about a little bit last week, they're the ones opposite each other on the color wheel. So yellow and purple, green and red, and blue and orange. And the complementary colors look really nice next to each other. So here's a complementary fish, which is red and green. And then here's another complementary fish, which is blue and orange. And the third pair of colors, purple and yellow. So we're going to make some complementary fish. So pick any one of these colors, purple and yellow, green and red, or blue and orange. Great, so let's start by cleaning off our palette. So I dip my paper towel in the water again and I'm just going to clean off, maybe use a dry part to soak up some water, get my palette nice and clean. And then decide which set of complementary colors you're going to use. So I think I'll use blue and orange. So I'm going to start with some blue. And this time I'm just going to put one of the colors at a time on my palette. That's because complementary colors, when we mix them, turn to brown. So while they look really nice next to each other, we don't want to mix them. So I'm just going to do one at a time. So I'm going to paint my fish, and I'm going to paint everything blue that I want on my fish, I'm going to paint right now. And then I'll add in the orange later once the blue dries a little bit. So go ahead and pick your colors and start with just one of your colors. Start painting your fish and leave some space for your second complementary color. Great, so once you've done everything you want in your first color, Let's clean off our palettes again using our paper towel and rinse out your brush really well this time. Great. And then I'm going to mix my second color, which is orange. So all the complementary colors are blue and orange, which is what I'm doing, green and red, and purple and yellow. So I'm going to mix some orange on my palette by mixing yellow with a little bit of red. And remember, you can make different shades of the color. So I'm going to make kind of a dark orange and a light orange. Now you might want to wait a couple minutes until your first color is dry. Oops, mine's not very dry yet. So that you don't end up the colors don't end up bleeding together and mixing and making brown. 
So you can set your fish aside for a couple minutes and pause the video while your paint dries. Great. So once yours is dry, you can start adding in the second color. So, and just experiment. And complementary colors look very beautiful next to each other. So blue and orange look really nice next to each other. And you'll notice that blue is a cool color and orange is a warm color. So the complementary colors, one of them is cool and one of them is always warm. Great, so now you've colored in your complementary fish. You'll see, I think the blue looks really brilliantly blue next to the orange, and the orange also looks really bright and nice. And you'll see I've made a pattern again, so I used a light orange, blue squiggle, dark orange dots, and then my light orange squiggle, blue squiggle, dark orange dots. So I've used multiple shades of orange in my complementary fish, which is orange and blue. Okay, today we took another look at our color wheel and learned about warm colors and cool colors and complementary colors with our complementary fish and warm and cool fish. So next time you're doing a painting or coloring in something using color, you can think about what things do I want to feel warm and what things do I want to feel cool? And you can use warm and cool colors accordingly. So if you're painting a desert with a big sun and it's supposed to feel really hot, I would use a lot of warm colors for that. Whereas if I'm painting a polar bear in the Arctic, I'd probably use cool colors for that painting. Complementary colors are really nice to know about too because they look really nice next to each other. So, like this fish looks really bright and engaging because it's using complementary colors. So that's another good tool to keep in your tool bag when you're making paintings or drawings using color. So thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.